On September 5, 2012, a man named Samuel Little was arrested in a homeless shelter in Louisville, Kentucky. He was then extradited to California. There he would undergo DNA testing after his trial to connect Samuel to the murders of Carol Elford, Guadalupe Apodoca, and Audrey Everett. Police would charge Samuel with these murders, and they were under the belief that Samuel had committed at least 36 other murders in Los Angeles in the 1980s. This string of murders has gone undisclosed for over 30 years. On September 25, 2014, Samuel Little was found guilty of the murders and was sentenced to life imprisonment without the possibility of parole. After serving four years in prison, he made a series of shocking confessions to the FBI. On November 9, 2018, Samuel confessed to the murder of Melissa Thomas in 1996. On November 13th, he was charged with the murder of Denise Christie Brothers in 1994 after confessing to a Texas Ranger of a crime in May of that year. The Texas Sheriff's Office of Ector County announced that Samuel had confessed to dozens of murders that he may have committed. He claimed he killed over 90 women across 14 states between 1970 and 2005. If this is true, this means that Samuel has killed more women than John Wayne Gacy, Richard Ramirez, BTK, and Ted Bundy all together. Over the following weeks, Samuel would continually confess to multiple murders in various states. His victims were all women, some as young as 18 and as old as 55. On November 27th, the FBI announced that a violent criminal apprehension program team had confirmed that 34 of Samuel's confessions were true and were looking to match the rest to the unsolved murders. What is interesting about Samuel is at this time he was about 80 years old and so he was still able to recall many facts about the women he killed. He knew a lot of the dates, he knew a lot of the locations, what they looked like. He was able to even draw several pictures of his victims for FBI to go on. To find out why exactly Samuel chose a life of a serial killer, we have to go back to when he was born on June 7, 1940 in Reynolds, Georgia. Claims his mother was a prostitute and his family moved to Lorraine, Ohio to be raised by his grandmother. In school, he had trouble with discipline and his academics. He struggled with violence from a young age and he often fantasized about killing his teachers. And as a teenager, he collected true crime magazines that depicted images of crime scenes. His first recorded run-in with law enforcement took place in 1956 when he was convicted of breaking and entering into a home in Omaha, Nebraska. He was held in a juvenile institution. After this, Samuel moved to Florida to live with his mother in the 1960s and worked in a cemetery. And by 1975, he was arrested 26 times in 11 states for crimes such as theft, assault, attempted rape, fraud, and attack on government officials. In 1982, Samuel was arrested in Pensacola, Mississippi, and charged with the murder of 22-year-old Melina Rose LaPree, who had been missing for months. The jury decided to indict him for her murder. While Samuel was under investigation for this murder, he was extradited to Florida and given a trial for 26-year-old Patricia Mount. He was the last person to be seen with her, and she had been missing for months until her body was found and it was linked to Samuel. He was acquitted of these charges in January of 1984 and was released from prison. In October of 1984, he moved to San Diego, California, and he was arrested for kidnapping, beating, and strangling 22-year-old Lori Barrios. She survived the incident and was able to report him to police. However, one month later, Samuel was found in the back seat of his car with an unconscious woman whom he also beat and strangled. He only served a little over two years for these crimes and was released in February of 1987. And after this time, unfortunately, it becomes a little muddled because of Samuel's memory and because he went undetected for so long, it was hard to connect him with a lot of murders. But between 1990 and the early 2000s, investigators believe that he committed at least 10 more murders, but many people believe that it is a lot more than that considering he was on a very fast-paced spree throughout the 70s and 80s. So it is a little bit muddled, unfortunately, because he claims he didn't remember everything and he didn't remember dates and things like that, but it is believed that during this time he committed a lot of murders. 
And this brings us back to 2014 when Samuel was found guilty of the murders of Carol Elford, Audrey Nelson, and Guadalupe Apodaca. After receiving life imprisonment over the following years, he confessed to several other murders. When Texas Ranger James Holland became involved with the case, new charges on Samuel came up left and right. He had murder charges in Alabama, South Carolina, Kentucky, Tennessee, Ohio, Texas, Louisiana, and Georgia. While discussing his crimes with the police, Samuel would often describe his victims in very derogatory terms by calling them a hoe or hooker or calling them fat. And he would often claim that the victims that he raped, which was most of them, that they deserved it or that they wanted it and he did what they wanted because they were prostitutes. So he would often try to place the blame on other people and also in a way make fun of his victims by calling them derogatory terms or making fun of their appearance. North Little Rock. Tell me what that girl looked like. Oh man, I loved her. I forget her name. Oh wait, I think it was Ruth. Okay. She was a heavy set, big old yellow gal. And had buck teeth. <laughs> he had a gap between the teeth everywhere. Now where did you meet her at? Okay, he got me in a rat crack house. I was, they were heard by six other girls were sitting on the porch doing some crack in there. I stopped to go in there. I seen the girl, that's why I stopped. We stayed together two days or more, I think about three days. We was going shoplifting. We went to Sears. We went to uh, Culver's. Samuel recalled an unnamed victim from Little Rock, Arkansas, with whom he toyed with before killing her. He stayed with her several days and even accompanied her when she was shoplifting in a grocery store and the two were arrested, but let out the same day. There are records stating that Samuel was arrested on April 20th, 1994 from a Kroger in that area, but no records of a woman being arrested. He then drove her to the outskirts of town, strangled her, and left her body in an old cornfield. Samuel would often leave his bodies in old fields, in mountains, in places where nobody would ever look for a body. Samuel even confessed to a murder that took place in Florida that he was found guilty of. They did link him to this murder, but another man was charged for this murder and he ended up serving 22 years of his life in prison even though he was innocent. While making his confessions, he drew the pictures of the women he killed and gave police descriptions. Some of his descriptions were highly detailed, such as the name and race and where they worked, but many of the women he could not recall barely any information. Just the time frame where he may have murdered them and their race. I also find it very interesting that Samuel had a longtime girlfriend named Jean Dorsey who he claimed was 30 years older than him, as she died of a brain hemorrhage in 1988 in Los Angeles. She traveled along with him, and the two shoplifted together and sold what they could to afford a hotel room and food for years. And unfortunately, there is not a lot known about Jean. She lived rather off the record. There is a picture of them together, but we don't know a lot about her. And so I'm wondering, and I'm always curious about this whenever I hear about Samuel Little, if she took place in any of the murders. She may not have killed anyone herself, but maybe she helped lure somebody in, or she was present, or she just knew about them in general and did nothing to turn him in, or to you know do anything about this so i always am curious about this because it seems rather unreasonable that two people traveled along the road together for years and years and years and committed other crimes just such as like uh you know shoplifting and stealing and things like that um and you know never knowing that the partner that you are traveling with all these years was killing people i would think that she would have known so find it very interesting that we just don't know barely anything about her but maybe over time there will be other documentation found out about Jean. at the time of his confession samuel was 78 years old he was in a wheelchair he had diabetes and heart problems and a toe amputation he lived a hard life filled with drugs non-stop travel and violence this, of course, led to the many health problems he suffered from. Samuel died on December 30th, 2020 in a Los Angeles hospital. The California Department of Corrections has not released a specific cause of death, but I would imagine it is due to his health issues and age. Throughout his confessions, he claimed to kill 93 women, and at this point there are 60 murders confirmed. 
and that would make him the most prolific serial killer in America who has ever been apprehended. This earned him the name the Choke and Stroke Killer. And it seems as if many of these murders will go unsolved because, like I said, he dumped bodies in places like, you know, cornfields and mountain ranges and things like that where you wouldn't look for a body and maybe if someone came across some like if kids were walking or um, you know someone was taking a hike or something like that they may have been scared and not reported a body so this is something where a body would have just like decomposed and no one would have ever known what happened to that person and so it just seems as if many of these murders will go unsolved but they have solved about 60 and they have linked 60 murders with Samuel at this point, which I think is great that they've been able to link so many to him. So let me know what you guys think about this case. Um, did you think it was interesting? Do you like me to make videos about like serial killers or like a specific killing crime? <laughs> I worded that badly. Like, you know, like the Dylan Redwine video that I did recently or like the Chris Watts case. Let me know what you guys like because I'm open to both possibilities. I find serial killers and um, like specific stories very interesting so let me know what you guys like and I will definitely make more videos about that and otherwise I hope you all have a great day and stay safe out there bye bye